4K, 240Hz, OLED at 32 inches. This is a monitor which kind of just ticks all the boxes for a lot of people. And, you know, after using it for a few days now, I can see exactly why. Also, 32 inches, I kind of understand the hype now. I've been using a 27 inch 4K monitor for like three and a half years now when it comes to editing and work. 32 inches does make that image quite noticeably bigger without making the pixel density any worse. Also, the combination of 4K and OLED, uh, it is just insane. Like, we're gonna be talking mostly about gaming today, uh, but if you do any production type work like myself, then yeah, this is a killer monitor almost exclusively for that type of work too. So what is this monitor? This is the PG32 UCDM from ASUS. And very important note, if you're interested in the specs, 32 inch 4K OLED at 240 Hz, there'll be other brands packaging this exact same panel as well. I know there's one from MSI, potentially from Dell or Alienware too. We'll talk more about those options towards the end, but let's just dive into what is going on here with this panel. So let's start with performance. First of all, the brightness is actually pretty solid on this monitor. I measured 260 nits for a 100% white screen with uniform brightness enabled, and that is kind of at the top end of what you'll see on an OLED monitor today. Now, I do have diffused blinds at my setup, so you know I do find 260 nits to be totally fine. I was using the monitor for the most part around 90 to 100% during the day, and then dipping it down to like 40 to 50% during the night. You really don't want to put this monitor in a super bright environment anyway, because it is is a QD OLED, it's a third gen QD OLED, uh, you will get that black level rising issue which does ruin the OLED experience quite a bit. In a normally lit environment this isn't really a problem, especially if you're displaying a really bright image. This monitor does also have a glossy coating and I see a lot of people calling it a semi-gloss coating and to be fair, you know, it is not as glossy as like my OLED TV downstairs, but it is still extremely reflective and, you know, a big difference compared to the anti-glare matte panels that you've seen on, say, the first OLEDs that came out. The user experience, though, of glossy versus anti-glare matte coating, it doesn't really feel that difference when you're just sitting down and focusing on what you're playing or like what work you're doing on the monitor itself. You know, maybe I'd lean more towards the anti-glare stuff personally, but, you know, for most use cases, they feel pretty much the same. The colors are extremely good good out of the box as I expected. The color temperature is right around 6200 Kelvin with a super low Delta E and in plain English that just means that the whites are pure white without any color tint. The dedicated sRGB mode is one of the best that I've tested so far with the target and measured colors virtually being identical and for those that prefer the wide gamut color mode which is what I recommend for gaming and some people prefer that for editing too like myself you have a massive DCI-P3 range of 98%. That range of colors combined with the contrast depth of OLED. I mean, I've said it so many times before, but the image quality here is so far beyond IPS, it is simply next level. The response times are exactly what you'd expect from an OLED, 0.1 milliseconds here with no overshoot. Every frame is super clean on this monitor with no ghosting or artifacting. For me, this is one of the most impressive things about OLED compared to IPS and TN. If you're really into fast paced games like myself, then this is a huge plus. There will still be a bit of motion blur though, due to how your eyes perceive motion from still frames, but this is literally as good as 240 Hz will ever look. This monitor does also have an ELMB mode at 120 Hz. So if you're playing games that can only run at 120, maybe you've hooked up an Xbox Series X, for example, to the HDMI 2.1 port, this will give you a nice reduction in perceived motion blur. Black frame insertion at 120 Hz can be a little bit jarring for some people, but it is definitely worth testing out. Now the text clarity is something that I want to talk about a little bit more than usual here, because this is not just a gaming monitor. This is, you know, potentially an everyday monitor for a lot of people, especially when it comes to production tasks and stuff like that. So basically, you know, being an OLED, you have that very unconventional subpixel layout that can create quite a bit of fuzziness and chromatic fringing when you're looking at smaller text on this display. But being a 4K panel with a higher pixel density, this is a little bit less of an issue here. It is definitely improved versus the first gen OLED 1440p panels where this issue was a bit more obvious. Don't get me wrong, it is still definitely there, especially if you compare it side by side to an IPS panel, and if your workflow is mostly reading pages upon pages of documents and small text, this still could potentially bother you quite a bit. But again, it is better versus the other OLEDs that I've tested, and I really think a lot of people can get used to it at least on this monitor. Now, when it comes to the gaming side of things, you can probably expect what I'm going to say about gaming on a 4K 240Hz OLED. It is absolutely insane. And typically when it comes to my gaming monitor reviews, I like to show gameplay on the monitor that is 
pretty relevant to what you would actually use the monitor for. So for 360 hertz, 540 hertz stuff, I would show esports games. For the more ultra wide stuff, maybe I'd show more immersive games, maybe driving games. This 4K 240 hertz OLED, I mean, it can literally run everything extremely well. Okay, maybe the esports stuff can feel a bit awkward at 32 inches, that I will admit. I found myself pushing the monitor back quite a bit just so that I could kind of keep up with things that were going on but you could still use this monitor and play at a pretty high level. The 240Hz here feels as good as 240Hz will ever feel. The single player stuff and even more casual FPS games are what I'd find myself playing more on this though. You can really appreciate the 4K resolution and textures in those type of games. And on this monitor, they look amazing. Battlefield 1, for example, although not that many people play it these days, is absolutely breathtaking on this monitor. The best part for me though, is the fact that you can game and then you can just switch over to editing or your work or watch a movie in HDR and legitimately be maxing out the experience there too. Again, this is a monitor with the specs that can literally do everything. Now there is another version of this monitor coming out, which is also a 32 inch 4K 240Hz OLED, but it is a W OLED as opposed to a QD OLED. More importantly, it has a feature where you can switch between 4K 240Hz to 1080p 480Hz, which for myself who primarily plays esports games, that is super interesting to me. The biggest question that I have about that monitor though is what is it going to look like across a 32 inch panel when you switch over to 1080p? And this monitor gave me the opportunity to test that out firsthand. I will admit, uh, yeah, 1080p across a 32 inch panel does not look good at all. It looks, you know, really quite blurry. You lose all of the kind of sharpness and aliasing effect that you get at 1080p on a smaller display. And yeah, I don't think I could get used to playing on 1080p on a 32 inch display on that future monitor coming out. So hopefully they have a crop mode on that monitor. I really would hope so. That way that 1080p 480Hz mode is a lot more comfortable to play on, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now in terms of OLED burn-in, Asus take this pretty seriously. This panel automatically dims to a super low brightness when it's not in use, which is really effective in preventing burning from happening on a static screen. It also has pixel cleaning built in and a pretty lengthy three year warranty. Pricing for this one is at $1,300 US and it is available from today. So that is $100 more expensive than the MSI model, which doesn't have ELMB, and I'm not sure how bright that one gets. I believe they have a three-year burning warranty as well. Also consider the different other options. I'm not going to compare them all today because I honestly haven't reviewed them. All I can say is that this one is rock solid, and for 1300 bucks, you know, I personally expected it to be a little bit more expensive, maybe closer to that 1500 to $1,600 mark, considering the specs and experience that is on offer here. But honestly, you know, when it comes to a single monitor that can do the most stuff, like the best, then this is pretty much as good as it gets.